Hey you guys, Tiffany here. It's been a while since I've made a Farm Fresh Friday video, but today I am making yogurt. So I thought it'd be really cool to share with you guys how I make yogurt. It is so easy to make yogurt and honestly, I think it's better for you. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a gallon of milk, can be store-bought, can be fresh, raw milk, sky's the limit on that. Depending on if you're wanting to keep your yogurt raw, the temperature might vary. Uh, you might want to do some research on that. This, um, I'm going to share how to make it with pasteurized milk because that is what is the most easily accessible uh, for regular people who don't have access to a family cow. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a gallon of milk. You're going to need a large pot. You're going to need a thermometer to monitor temperature. You're gonna need a measuring cup and then you are going to need jars for storing it as well as a culture. Now you can use regular yogurt from the store as your starter culture or you can actually buy live culture online depending on what type of yogurt you are wanting to use. Um, I'm actually using yogurt from the store and then once you've made this yogurt you can actually use your yogurt to start net future batches of yogurt so long as you have some yogurt left over. So at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on my oven light in my oven and you'll learn why, but what you're going to do is you're just going to, you're not going to turn your oven on, you're just going to turn the oven light on. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're actually going to get your milk in your pot and you're going to bring it up to about 185 to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you are using raw milk and you want to keep it raw, you do not want to get it to that that temperature. I don't know the science behind it. It actually kind of converts the milk at that at that heated temperature. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get the sorry, my animals are playing in the background. They're having a blast. So, we want to continuously stir. You don't want to scorch your milk, so you're going to continuously stir and slowly bring it up to 185 degrees. You don't have to stir it so frequently when it's still in the low temperature, like right now it's at about 75 degrees. It's whenever it starts to get higher that you've got to keep that stirring so that it doesn't scorch. Now, I am going to warn you, this is probably the most tedious, lengthy part of this recipe is just sitting here and getting the milk up to temperature. Ooh, it's at 180. It's like right there. All right, excellent. So that's pretty much just about at 185. I'm gonna get this moving so that it's less likely to scorch. Uh, get the ice bath ready. I'm going to fill this up with a little bit of ice water because we need, next thing we have to do is bring the milk mixture down to 120 degrees. So we're gonna just set this right in here. And we start stirring to bring the temperature back. We're gonna get it down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit before we introduce the live culture. And I'm just gonna keep, it's gonna cool down faster if you stir it. There we go, 120 degrees. I'm gonna pull this out and drain the water so it doesn't get colder, any colder than it already is. So now I have a cup of plain yogurt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, all right, and then I'm gonna take some of the warm milk and I'm gonna mix them in. It's gonna help it mix in fully. I'm just gonna mix it up with the milk. All right, and now I'm going to add it to our milk. So I've got my lid on the pot. I'm gonna cover it over with a towel just to help trap that warmth. And then we're gonna place it. Now remember, we put the light on in the stove. Now the reasoning why we turn the light on in the stove is because that light is actually gonna keep help keep the temperature in there warm, not hot, but just warm, because that's what's gonna help this live culture um, convert the milk into yogurt. Now, once again, like I said, the oven is not on. I did not set a temperature, I just turned the light on. This is gonna kind of help it be warm in there. 
So we warmed the milk up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Then as soon as we brought it to that temperature, then we dropped it in an ice bath and brought the temperature back down to 120. And I believe it's 110 to 120. And then once we reached that temperature, we added the live culture, either a yogurt or a, a powder. It's like a, a powdered live culture. And then as soon as that is done and mixed in, we put it in the oven with just the light on wrapped in a towel. You could keep the yogurt in the pot. I've always done it this way. Or you could go ahead and put it in the jars if you're not planning on adding anything. I like to add vanilla and a little bit of sugar to mine just to sweeten it a bit, but it's completely preference. So we're gonna go ahead and let this rest in the stove. And if you've never made yogurt before, this is gonna sound really crazy because you never leave milk on the counter. We're gonna leave it in the stove for about eight hours. So I'm actually gonna just let this sit overnight and we'll be back in the morning to check in on it and finish it. Okay, so it's the next morning and I thought I would actually preface this with a little bit of extra information on the, is it a fermenting period? I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's fermenting, so to speak. It's for the live culture to take over and convert the milk into yogurt. Now, I actually ended up letting mine rest in the oven for 10 hours. It's gonna be 10 hours by the time I take it out, which is okay. You're fine. <laughs> Leon's feeding his bunnies. So I actually let it rest for 10 hours. So I'm gonna preface this by saying you could do eight, 10, 12 hours. Just know that the longer that you do it, the more tart it's going to taste. I've found, and it's also gonna be thicker, I believe, because you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna see that homemade yogurt is thinner than store-bought yogurt. And I think that's because they use some sort of uh, thickener, thickening agent in it. So, but the longer that you let it sit and continue to grow the back the the culture, the thicker it's going to get, but the tartar it's going to get. So I usually do eight to ten hours. I found that that is kind of my sweet spot. Alrighty, let's go ahead. It's nice and warm in there. Perfect. All right. Ooh, that looks perfect. So the first thing I always do is a smell test. Mm, that smells like yogurt. Now, if you are a little unnerved by this, it's totally fine, it's a new thought. Um, whenever you smell it, trust your nose. If for some reason it smells sour, like you smell sour milk, then something went wrong, but it should smell like yogurt. I've got my spoon. And we're gonna we're gonna do a spoon test now. See how thick it is. Oh yeah, look at how thick that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stir it. You wanna mix it up. It's gonna look clumpy like this. That's okay. That's totally normal. All right. So here is our yogurt. You see how it's. It's thick, but it's not like super thick. And that is the consistency of homemade yogurt. From this point, you could actually go one of two ways. So you could take this as it is and sweeten it, add flavor, and you got yogurt. Or you could actually take this and strain it in a, a cheesecloth and it'll strain out some of the uh, I don't know if it would be whey at this point, but you can strain it and make it further, make it thicker. Note, the when you strain it, it's gonna get tartar, but you could strain it and you could actually, before you sweeten it and everything like that, you could actually get uh, something that's closer to Greek yogurt. Now, I believe it's not quite 100% Greek yogurt because I believe that there's a specific culture type for Greek yogurt, but I know that you can actually take this and strain it and make something very similar to Greek yogurt. But we're gonna we're gonna sweeten this up and make it tasty. So I'm gonna use some vanilla extract, and I just use for a gallon. I use a capful. You can use any sweetener of your choosing. You could use stevia, honey, regular sugar, turbinado. Um, I'm just gonna use regular white sugar today. Um, the thing about adding sugar to it, it is to taste. 
Uh, some people like it more tart, some people like it sweeter. I like it right, a nice, nice balance of tartness and sweetness. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off with a cup and mix it in. Mmm, smells so good. And this is such a fun, simple recipe. Yeah, it can take time getting it up to temperature because you don't want to boil it whenever you're initially getting it up to 185 degrees. And I think that's the most tedious part of this process because a lot of this is just letting it sit in a warm space, in a warm dark space, and resting. Alright, let's see. Mmm. Leon! Yeah? Come here, buddy. You want to try the yogurt? Ready? Is it hot? No, it's just warm. Ready? <gasps> that good? You heard the approval. He says that's tasty. We have some freshly cleaned half gallon sized jars. You don't have to put them in half gallon sized jars. You could put them in quarts, pints, half pints. You could even put them in like the little single, single serve cups, which I think actually is a really good idea. But we're gonna put them in here. This is lighter, I can go ahead and try and pour it in. Oh, that's satisfying. Look at that. Look at how perfect. And there you go. There's our yogurt. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the refrigerator, let it chill. And then we can use it to do whatever we want that you would use yogurt for. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe next we'll make some homemade granola. I think, I think we're gonna make some homemade granola next. So I'm gonna try to get back on Farm Fresh Fridays. If I could at least get one up a month, that'd be cool. So keep an eye out, and if you guys have any uh, recipes or any farm fresh ingredients that you guys would like seeing used in some of our videos, leave a comment down below. I want to come up with many different ways that we can eat stuff that we can grow or source at farmer's markets. I'd love to incorporate that more into our diet in fun ways. So thank you so much for stopping in.